It's time to relive great moments with former Cowboys. Eddie Sutton, one of the all-time great. You know, that's one of the great things in uh, having the, the opportunity to coach here at Oklahoma State was the fact that you had such great people. It's time for Where Are They Now on Triple Play Sports Radio. John Farrell, former Cowboy pitcher back in the early 80s. And you know what, mostly put up to me, I guess, after you know chasing everybody around, chasing us around the country. Where Are They Now? Our weekly talk with former Oklahoma State athletic coaches, players, and personnel. Desmond Mason, former All-American player here at Oklahoma State. You know, so today, that's what I spend most of my days doing. For the most part, is you know, in the studio, trying to paint, trying to create, and um, I enjoy doing it's like catching up with an old friend every Wednesday. Boy, do I feel old today, as I always do on a Wednesday when we bring back some of these uh, former athletes. Uh, we're talking with Houston up. Sure did. Had a great time. That was a, of course, my mom and dad went to school there. My brother, Dickie, as you mentioned, went to school there. And, uh, of course, we both met our, our wives right there in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Now your host, ready to take a stroll down memory lane, here is Tom Dorado. All right, all right, all right. Here we go. I, we finally got a hold of the man himself. That would be Pete Incabilia, who, amongst the many great things he's done in his life, he hadn't figured out how to work his cell phone. And that's that's the... <laughs> I mean, we'll put that down on the uh, uh, to-do list for later on. But how you doing, man? You been in ta- you were in town last week. How'd that go for you? Oh, it was a blast, man. It was uh, great to see everybody. Great to... Good to be back on campus, and you know, you know, hell, I hadn't seen you in a hundred years, so <laughs> that was fun. Saw your brother, saw you know Tommy and Matt and Josh, and you know, it was it was great. You know, it's crazy. You know, I come to town, and Josh has got a couple kids, and Matt's got four, and <laughs> you know, Tom and Kathy look exactly the same, and uh, you know, Stillwater always feels like home. You know, especially for a guy that. You know, 18 years old, hopped in an old beat-up truck and headed to Stillwater and, you know, haven't been back to California much, you know, then laid my roots in northern Texas, and uh, it was great. Uh, it felt like I never left, but, you know, that's a tribute to the fans they have there, man. They're, they're just great, man. They, you guys treated me way too good than I deserve. You know, I was glad you, you didn't bounce the first pitch in because that would have been embarrassing. <laughs> You know what? I knew I would have heard about it on this show if I did, Tommy. <laughs> I knew that if I did not hit that glove, you were going to wear me out. You know what? Which would have been perfect. It would have been because, you know, you and I go back to when you first arrived, 83. Mm-hmm. And we've, we've been good friends. We could say pretty much what we want to say to each other. And we have all these years later. But, you yeah. know, it was it was great seeing you back. And the fans uh, were, were very responsive. But... How about the fact that it was part and parcel of that great weekend for the 59 championship team? I know you took part in that as well. Yeah, that was really awesome. You know, I mean, to see the one championship team in baseball in the history of Oklahoma State was really neat. I got to meet a few of them. And, you know, I told people, I said, you know, the one thing that haunts me is, you know, all the great things we did there at Oklahoma State. You know, we never brought – you know, that championship home, you know, because that's, you know, that's the way you say thank you to everybody, you know, is mm-hmm. bringing that championship home and, you know, and it's nobody's fault. I mean, you know, you know, when you're playing, you know, the best teams in the country, you know, you need the ball bounce your way a little, little sometimes and, you know, the ball just didn't bounce our way, you know, and so we had great years, but it really does haunt me. You know, the one thing I really wanted to do, was to bring that, you know, national championship home. We never got it done. So it was great to meet the guys that did. <laughs> and, you know, they were received very well, and, of course, they got their mm-hmm. rings, and that was just an emotional weekend as well. Games didn't right. go as well as we wanted to. You got a chance to, uh, uh, I guess, address the team, right, right after the Friday night uh, marathon loss. Uh, what did you tell them? 
Well, you know, I told him about, you know, um, about, you know, embrace the history here. You know, we, you know, Oklahoma State has and will always be considered, you know, one of the best college baseball schools in the country. And, you know, that's a lot of weight to weigh on your shoulders, but that, that's what it is, you know. And, you know, you got to put your time in. you got to sacrifice. And, you know, uh, the game's got to be more important than you. You know, it's got to be about something. It's got to be about the emblem on your chest. It's got to be about the guys around you and, you know, your commitment and sacrifice, you know, to win a championship for Oklahoma State. You know I mean? that Because that's what we were. You know, that's, mm-hmm. you know we never – it never entered our minds that we weren't going to win a national championship or go to the World Series. It just never entered our mind because, you know, Gary and Tom and Dave just never let it happen. I mean, we just were always expected to win the tournament and expected to win the win regional and, and go compete for a national championship. I mean, my God, if we'd have lost in the, in the, in the Big A tournament, I mean, you know, we might have had to go to a different state. Let me ask you, it's kind of starting the beginning a little bit. You, you've alluded to it a little bit, but uh, you know, you coming from the West Coast to Stillwater, Oklahoma, it wasn't exactly a perfect fit, uh, but you had to kind of uh, you know, smooth out some of the rough edges when you were here. What was that like as you look back on that now? Well, you know, you know thank God for people like yourself and – you know, the people that live in Stillwater. I mean, they embraced all of us. You know, Rob Walton was from Jersey, and, you know, Vern Hare, another guy was with us from Washington, and mm-hmm. Carlos Diaz and Sergio Espinola from New York. And, you know, and, and we wouldn't go home Christmas. And, you know, the people there embraced us, and they just felt like, you know, we we're a part of their family. And, you know, it made things a lot easier, you know, leaving home for the first time at 18 years old, you know, a lot of guys, you know, get that homesick deal. But, you know, we were surrounded by great alums and, you know, great coaches and, you know, just had a great support system where everybody embraced us and made us feel welcome and made us feel at home. So it made that transition very easy because of all you guys. You know, we always look to, and rightfully so, the great year, 1985, you know, the 48 homers, the 143 RBI and all that. But very few people know it wasn't that easy for you the first year or so when you were here. Uh, you got to give credit on let you do that. Certainly Ward took you under his wing and, and, and you got things going that way. But kind of talk about those first year, that first year or so here. Yeah, you know, I really struggled. Uh, I believe it was like my first 10 games. Mm-hmm. I remember uh, – you know, Gary and Tom, uh, Gary and Dave, you know, really having a lot of discussion with me on maybe making some adjustments. And, uh, you know, Dave suggested a couple of adjustments, and, you know, moving my hands a little closer to my, uh, a little closer to my uh, right shoulder and, you know, maybe stand up a little taller so I was a little freer because, uh, you know, I was so big and muscular. And it kind of freed things up, and it just kind of clicked. But, you know, the first – Ten games. I mean, I didn't play very well. I didn't get many hits. I think I was hitting a buck old five or something. I was on the interstate, and you know. But you know, Dave and Gary believed in me and Tom, and they kept throwing me out there because you know, always they they saw something because you know, the first ten games I didn't play that well, and then once I made the adjustments, you know, I got a few hits. You know, one game, a few hits, and then all of a sudden things took off. And and you know, anytime you you have success, it breeds confidence. Um, so, you know, the more success I had, the more confident. And, uh, you know, I trusted Gary and Dave, you know, explicitly. You know, whatever they told me, I knew it was good information. So, you know, you got to have that trust factor and, and you got to believe in what you're doing. And, you know, I was fortunate to have two guys that were great and, you know, helped me along in my career. A lot of people don't know it, but you weren't always a willing student. I mean, you came in and you were a little on the uh, ornery side at times. And, and those were sure. great. Those were great. I'm, I'm being nice, right? Politically correct. You you're, you're actually being really nice. I'm surprised. <laughs> it must be because we're on the radio. It's a family show. <laughs> we can't. I can't say what I was really thinking. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, there was uh, some. Well, that's the first. Yeah. Well, yeah. I know. I, I've, I've I've mellowed in my old age. But the uh, fact the fact is. Don't we all? Yeah. The fact is, though, you had there were several 
exchanges between you and Ward, maybe some, not so much with you and Dave, but, you know, you kind of fought this a little. You thought you were this, and they thought you were that. But you finally did get in step with everybody, and it didn't take long for that to happen. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, you know, I, Coach Ward was really good for me because he was a really intelligent, hard-nosed, you know, um, you know, very precise. He was very profi- precise in what he wanted you to do. And he was very straightforward, very honest, and you know I fought, you know I fought the change a little bit because you know I had had so much success, you know, throughout high school, mm-hmm. you know, and you know as as a young player, you know, I mean, you know, you, you have a few bad games, and all of a sudden they're making these drastic changes, and you know, and at first I, you know, I wasn't buying into it, but as I struggle, and as I be- began to see that, you know what, maybe these guys you know, have a better idea than I do. You know, they've been around the game a lot longer than I have. So um, it took me a little while to buy into it. But once I did, um, you know, I worked diligent, diligently to be the best, the best at those mechanics that I could be. And I think, I think that's why I worked so hard, because I wanted to make sure I was mechanically and fundamentally sound, um, because I wasn't. And I had been doing it my whole career and getting away with it. And I knew as the, as the levels got higher and the players got better, you know, my mechanics and my fundamentals had to be, you know, uh, a, a reaction, you know, something they didn't have to think about. You know, I had to be a well-trained machine and, you know, and, you know, those guys, you know, I mean, I think I broke Tom Holliday's and Dave Holliday's arms while I was there. I mean, Nobody swung more than I did. <laughs> That's about the – hey, I can attest to that. That is for damn sure. All right. Uh, college baseball player of the century back in 85. Uh, those eye-popping numbers, two-time All-American. Now, I know, having seen you the other day, I mean, you have a hard time remembering yesterday, much less all the way back. But but what do you recall Don't about do. those numbers and, and the year and the way you finished up your collegiate career? You know – when I think about those numbers, I mean, I think about my teammates, and I think about, you know, Randy Whistler and, mm-hmm. and Doug Desenzo and Mike Day, um, you know, walking 100 times and scoring 100 runs and always <laughs> being on base. You know, I think uh, Jimmy Berrigan and Billy Smith hitting behind me, you know, who had great years too. You know, it, it, it was a group effort. I mean, there's no way I can drive in 143 runs you know, without those guys being on base. There's no way that I could hit 48 home runs without those guys being on base and them have not, nowhere to put me. So, you know, for me, I always, I always think about it as a, as a team, you know, uh, accolade. You know, uh, I think about my teammates. And, you know, it's a funny thing. You know, I really never really cared about, you know, breaking the record. But, you know, it was my teammates, you know, that were, you know, were my were the biggest fans, you mm-hmm. know. They wanted me to do it, and to me, that that was the greatest part of it. You know, it wasn't about me; it was about they wanted me to do it for them. You know, um, very, it was kind of strange for me to say that, and I hope I'm, you know, sending out the right message. But you know, they were. I mean, I remember Doug Desenzo one day. We you know we were eating lunch or doing something, and he goes, he goes, man, you got to do this, dude. And I said, do what? He goes, you got to break this record. I'm like, what are you talking about? We need to win a national championship. I don't care about the record. He goes, no, you need to do it, man. You know, and he was getting in my face a little bit, you know. And I was like, okay, all right. You know what I mean? I, I didn't really think about it. You know, my teammates, I think, thought about it more than I did. Yeah, was it a combination of right time, right place? Because you were obviously physically strong. Uh, it was the live bat era. Uh, let's face it, uh, fly balls in the in the, in the southern south wind at Reynolds Stadium usually found their way out. Uh, was it a combination of all those things, or was it just something that you felt every time you went up there that if I make contact, it's gone? Yeah, you know, I, I felt you know I, I felt like I had put the time and the effort in mm-hmm. to be the best that I could be, and I felt like I could hit. A, I felt like every time I went to the plate, I wanted to hit a home run. I did, because that's that was my job. 
my job was to, you know, hit three run homers and change momentum for the game. And, you know, I, I might strike out a couple times, but, you know, I'm, I'm going to do some damage somewhere to help, you know, change the momentum of the game and, and hopefully help us win a game because that was my job. My job was to drive and run. And, you know, just like it was Dougie's job to get on base and steal a base and, you know, Mike Day to get on base. You know, those three guys in front of me kind of relished the role. You know, they, they, they were getting on base. I mean, Mike Day could have swung at a lot of baseballs that he didn't swing at. Mm-hmm. You know, but he, you know, Coach Ward was such a good teacher, and he established our roles. So, I mean, I think it was the perfect, it was the perfect storm, Tom. You know, I had the right guys in front of me, you know, who were very, were very unselfish, you know, getting on base. You know, for the big donkey to come up. You know, every time I came up, came up, there's two guys on base. At yeah. least, you know, so you know, um, I was always hitting. You know, in great situations where you know pitchers had to throw me strikes. You know, they they had to come at me because there was nowhere to put me. So, you know, I agree with you. You know, uh, you know, uh, the wind did blow out there, and you know, we had I had the right type of people around me who were very unselfish and were all about you know winning win a national championship and, and to do whatever it took for us to get there. And, you know, my role was to drive and run. And we all did our jobs. And, you know, I'm the one that came out with, you know, 48 home runs and 143 RBIs, which are, you know, quote, unquote, you know, home runs and strikeouts, what everybody talks about. So, mm-hmm. you know, from a pitching standpoint, it's strikeouts. From a hitting standpoint, it's home runs. So, Hell, well, I'm you... the one that got all the press, but you know those guys deserve a deserve a lot of credit too. You'd fit in perfectly in this day and age in Major League Baseball because either guys no, either yeah. hit a home run or strike out. Exactly, man. I, I was born about 20 years too early. <laughs> Tommy, I'd yeah. have fit right in now. It'd have been been perfect. They would have loved you now. Hey, let me ask you this. Oh yeah. A- any any one home run, any one home run day. Anyone win? I mean, we, we had so many when you were here, and that's this is an unfair question to ask because I should have prepped you. And, you know, as old as you are, you probably would have needed like a month to think about this. But uh, <laughs> any any one home run come to mind uh, that 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 you still remember or, or look back on? You know, there is one that everybody talks about, and, and not a lot of people know about. We had a rain delay in Wichita. Um. I think we had like a 45 minute or an hour rain delay and I was coming to the plate and I hit a ball uh, literally off this this lady's house across <laughs> the street and they put a sign up out there with my name on it in the yard and uh, a lot of people don't know about that but that was my most memorable because it was raining it was you know kind of cold and we had an hour rain delay, and I hit the first pitch off some lady's house in left field. <laughs> that, you know, the fish story gets bigger. It was this far and this far and this far. You know, it keeps, you know, it's, it, it keeps growing in size. But I, re- I don't know why I remember that one. I guess maybe because it's Wichita State. You know, they were always our arch rivals, you know, and they were always the ones we had to beat in order to get to Omaha. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it was always us and them battling every year to go to Omaha and uh you know those games I guess stick in my mind because you know they were probably our top opponent ironically Cowboys have Wichita State tonight so they'll be up there in that same stadium that you just talked about my favorite before we move on to your pro career my favorite is and it still might be going uh the one you hit over the railroad track in Lincoln uh oh yeah now that thing yeah. That, that that was that. that was a yeah. th- that was measured in miles because that thing <laughs> the, the railroad track was a long way from the fence. Yeah, I remember that. Yep, yeah, I remember that. That was eighty five. Yeah, that was eighty five, and I think that was against Coastal Carolina, if I if I remember right. Could have been good. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was, I think it was Coastal Carolina. The only reason I remember that because an old teammate of mine, Dave Holland, who I played with in Philly, was playing third base for him then as a sophomore uh-huh. and he always reminded me about that ball I hit against them uh, 
with the actually Tommy, the wind was blowing in too. But. No, it was. It was blowing it out was big blowing time. In. No, <laughs> you never had that. It, the wind didn't even <laughs> when you got up. To, if it was blowing out of the north, it just shifted to the south just to help That's you out. That's the Tom Dorado I know. <laughs> That's the Tommy I know. Hey, let me ask you this: You you uh, had the I don't know the foresight, uh, the uh, courage, the arrogance, whatever. You were drafted by Montreal, and you basically told them, I'm not going to the minor leagues. What went into that situation? Then you were traded to the Rangers. Never did. I think only one of 15 players that ever played in the major leagues without playing in the minors. What went into that thought press, process? And did you, you know, were you rolling the dice there? Well, you know, I trusted um, uh, my agent, uh, Bucky Boy, who took Bob Horner straight from college, from Arizona State to the big leagues. And, you know, and I think, you know, Tom and Dave and Gary had a conversation with Bucky. And, you know, those guys felt like I was I was going to be able to do it, handle it mentally. I don't mm-hmm. think any of them were worried about me handling physically. I think they were all worried about me handling it mentally. And I think those guys convinced Bucky that, you know, this can happen, you know, this should happen. And for me personally is what I told Bucky and everybody. I said, look, obviously the place you want to go is the big league. And I'm not going to know what it's like unless I walk along, walk with those guys and, you know, playing some games with them is, you know, do, do I have everything it takes to play there? So we kind of changed our – our demands to, you know, not that I had to go to the big leagues, but that I wanted to go to big league spring training. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to, you know, see big league pitchers. And I wanted to face big league pitchers. And I wanted to, you know, see what it's like to, you know, uh, if I could play with them. And, you know, Montreal still wouldn't do anything. So, you know, Sandy Johnson, you know, orchestrated a trade. He traded a couple major league guys for me to uh, Montreal, which, you know, now they can't do, you know, Major League Baseball had a rule now uh, saying that you, you actually got to play in a, in a professional game before you can be traded now. Thanks to you. So I I, yeah, thanks to me. I ruined it for everybody. Yeah, you did. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it was never me really demanding to play in the Major League. It was more me wanting to actually, you know, be in big league spring training and, you know, go through the workouts and, you know what? You know, see what a big league pitcher looks like, and and what he throws like, and to see if I could hold my own. And you know, I felt like after a couple of weeks of spring training, I you know I felt like you know uh, I could play with those guys. I mean, I was confident in my ability to play there. But if I had not gone that route, I may have never gotten that opportunity. You know, I mean, who knows if I go to the minor leagues and you know blow a hamstring or you know get drilled in the head with a baseball or. I go down in there and struggle, you know. I mean, maybe my career goes in a different direction. So, you know, I'm very thankful that, you know, the coaching staff of Oklahoma State, you know, had enough confidence in me and believed in me that, you know, I I could go out there and hold my own and I wouldn't embarrass myself. April 8th, 1986, you step into the batter's box with the Texas Rangers. A, what kind of reception did a brash kid like you who didn't play in the minors, get from veterans uh, going into that game. And what was going through your mind when you stepped in there? Well, I can tell you, you know, I wasn't well received in spring training by any means because, you know, most of those guys in the big leagues, you know, spent several years in the minor leagues earning their way up. And, Mm -hmm. you know, here I am, some, you know, 21-year-old snot-nosed kid, you know, who's right out of college is, you know, getting an opportunity to play in the big leagues, you know, so – I wasn't real received at first, but I think I earned the respect, you know, by the way I, you know, approached and played the game. And, you know, I had some success in spring training. And, you know, by all rights, you know, I was probably the best, one of the best outfielders they had. So, you know, once I got through spring training, I had the, you know, respect of my peers on my team. But, you know, now I go and step into the plate, you know, you know, now I got to earn everybody else's respect, you know. Yeah. So, you know, I wore quite a few baseballs, you know. I mean, I was, you know, I, I don't know how many times I got hit, but it was a lot that year. And, you know, and I knew it was coming, and, you know, I expected it. And, 
you know, um, you know, I knew I was gonna, you know, gonna have to wear some baseballs, and you know, I'm gonna have to earn guys' respect. They were gonna see how I reacted, and, you know, um, and I, I think, you know, eventually, you know, my first at bat, actually against Dave Steve, I think it was my second at bat, you know, who was a Cy Young Award winner the year before. I hit a double off the top of the wall, and that was my first hit. And, you know, I was on top of the world, man. I mean, you know, you know, you know. I was a kid, you know, dreaming about being here, you know, and now I'm here. So it was, uh, it was really a, kind of an out of body experience, Tommy, actually reaching a goal that you've always dreamed about since you were a kid. Twelve years in the bigs: Texas, Detroit, Houston, Philly, Baltimore, Yankees. Played some in Japan. Two tours of duty in Detroit, and in Houston, and in Philadelphia. I'd say all the numbers I could throw out, and you had a couple hundred home runs, uh, almost 700 RBIs. But you know what? The number, I think, that, that really validates what your stay in the major leagues was, you were a lifetime 246 hitter. How about that? Yep. 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 You know, you know, people tell me this all the time, and I think that's why I'm doing what I'm doing now. Is, you know, everybody I played for, for some reason, they'd always say this to me, and, and I never knew what it meant, but – they always thought that I'd made people around me better. And I, I don't know why. Um, you know, I'm not a raw, raw cheerleader guy, as you well know, Tommy. I, I just no. go out and put the work in, put my head, you know, nose to the grindstone and, and get after it. You know, I'm, you know, I play, play, you know, I'm very grateful to, to, have been, to have done something I love to do my whole life. You know, my dad, you know, worked two jobs at the post office and, at the deli, you know, and, and, you know, he did it to put food on our table and take care of us, not necessarily because he loved it. And there's a lot of people like that. So I don't know if it was because, you know, I, I grew up watching my dad, you know, work his butt off, you know, uh, you know, get, you know, four or five hours of sleep. But um, I, I just knew that, you know, I, I had to go out and make sure that I didn't disrespect the organization. I didn't respect a coach, a fan or my family, and that's the way I went out and did my business, and for some reason, you know, lots of guys, you know, I had uh, Porky Anderson tell me that, I had Jim Fergosi tell me that, I had Johnny Padre tell me that, I don't know what it is, I, I guess it's just the way I go about my business, I don't know, Tommy, I, I don't think that I do anything different than anybody else, but for some odd reason, you know, and, and Tom, Tom has told me that a lot, Gary told me that a lot, you know, uh, it's just something I think you're born with. It's not something that, you know, you can go out and try and do. It's just, you know, it's just like anything else. You know, God gives you gifts, and, you know, and hopefully you use them in the right way. And I just think that was kind of one of my gifts, you know, being a 250 hitter, and, you know, and, and hitting a couple hundred home runs in the big league. And, you know, I had some good years. I had some bad years. But um, I think teams it liked having me in that clubhouse. Um you know, from a leadership standpoint. And I think that, you know, the latter part of my career, I think, you know, when when my abilities started 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 to erode, I was still in the big leagues and I think it was for that reason. Last thing, you're still in the uh in the business, in the industry. You haven't gotten far from it. You know, Grand Prairie, Laredo, Sugarland, independent baseball. Uh you liking that thing? I mean it keeps you close to the game and now they can look at you and say What's Skip saying about me here? You know, uh, you're in a different position right. now. Right. Well, you know, the thing that I, I'm, I'm, I remember how hard the game is. And I still remember the game as a player. And I think I've never forgotten that. And, you know, the one thing that I always try to do is make sure the players know that I care about them. You know, not just from a standpoint of, you know, how well they play, but, you know, you walk by and say, hey, man, how you doing? How's the family? How's mom and dad? You know, you build a relationship with each player. And in indie ball, winning matters. Mm -hmm. You know, I was in Detroit, and I was in player development for several years. And, you know, I felt like almost like a glorified babysitter because, you know, basically everything you did was scripted. And, you know, the front, office, the front office tells you what to do, and you just basically babysit everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, here, you know, uh, winning is important. You know, that's how everybody keeps their job. It's, you know, kind of like a mini, mini major league team, you know. I mean, 
you know, we all keep our jobs as long as we win. And, and uh, you know, playing to win and developing guys to win is important. And the best part of it is, you know, you get a lot of guys who get, you know, get a second chance to go back and affiliate a ball and, and get to the big leagues. And, you know, that's a rewarding part, too. You know, as, you know guys come in here and, and you know, they're, you know, this is the, you know, this is the last place before, you know, you're going out and getting a real job. So, <laughs> you know, to see guys get picked up and get back in affiliate teams and get to the big leagues, I mean, that's a big reward, too. So, Hey, I was glad we could catch up. We could go on for another hour and really get into the good stuff, but we won't do that, you know, today. <laughs> but We can't do that on the phone. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> on the air. you and I will have to rehearse it first, you know, off the air just so we know. Just so, exactly, buddy. Yeah, we we don't want to we don't want to offend anybody. Uh, and yeah, that, yeah. that was kind of what we did when we were here together. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. A couple, <laughs> couple Italians. Yeah, a couple Italians in Stillwater, brother. That that was dangerous to say the least. Hey, I appreciate you, yeah. bud. Thanks for spending time with us. Spun some good stories, and uh, yeah, we'll we'll touch base with you. You know, during the year, I know you're a big time manager, so you'll give me some time eventually. I'm sure. <laughs> Any time for you, Tom. It's only time, brother. All right, brother. Hey, good luck. You're starting your season here next week. Uh, isn't that correct? Yep, yeah. All yep. right. Uh, first day of spring is the 15th, man. We're getting ready to rock and roll around here. Hey, I'll be checking the wins and losses. and If you lose, I'll be blaming you. It'll be on you. Of right? I'm sure you'll call me when I'm losing, not when I'm I'll playing. text you for dang sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, big man. I'll talk to you soon. Uh, you too, brother. See ya. Pete Incavillia, one of the all-time greats here at Oklahoma State. And uh, I wanted to use this time frame to kind of go into some things maybe you didn't know about Pete, never heard about Pete, from Pete. And uh, he was he was gracious to, to share those moments, but uh, he's one of the icons, no question about that.